now. Okay. Imagine having the urge to use the restroom uh, to go pee approximately 15 to 30 times a day. Each and every time you go, you feel a burning sensation. And this uh, burning sensation isn't coming from just your urethra, but you feel it in your lower abdomen and lower back too. After countless of hospital visits and tests done, which came back all negative, <laughs> Um, you still have no answer. So what could be wrong? Uro uh, a urologist would tell you that you have a disease called interstitial cystitis. And this is a disease I have been living with for two years now. And I'd like to take the opportunity today to educate you further of what it is, who can get it, how common is it, what are its possible sim oh, what are its symptoms, how it's diagnosed, and possible treatments and remedies. First, what is interstitial cystitis, or IC? According to the Interstitial Cystitis Association, it's a chronic infl uh, inflammatory condition of the bladder that causes frequent, urgent, and painful urination with or without pelvic pain. The natural lining of the bladder, or the epithelium, which protects it from toxins in the urine, is damaged in an IC patient. With frequent exposure to these toxins, the bladder wall becomes covered with small green wounds known as tecal hemorrhages. And I have an image to show you of what that looks like. It's pretty bad. <laughs> um, right here, the lines and the small dots are those tecal hemorrhages. And with these small bleeding wounds, the bladder isn't able to stretch to its full potential and causing it to scar and stiffen, which is why an icy patient has to urinate frequently. Now that you know what IC is, you are probably wondering who can get the disease and how common is it. According to the National Institutes of Health, IC affects about 700,000 people in the United States, 90% of which are women and 10% are men. The average age is the average age of onset is 40 years old. Only 25% of IC cases involve people under the age of 30. Therefore, anyone can develop this disease at any age. And unfortunately, besides gender, knowing, knowing other risk factors is still enough. Next, I will be discussing what the symptoms of IC are. Usually, a patient uh, with IC will feel uh, pain in the pelvic region, near the uh, lower back, and lower abdomen. The urge to urinate is usually severe, and the number of trips to restroom is three times greater than the average seven, uh, five to seven times per day. As a patient, I have experienced all these symptoms, um, including other common ones such as fever, chills, um, fatigue, and blood found in the urine. Um, and keep in mind that all these symptoms are felt on a daily basis. So, yeah. Although these symptoms may be similar to urinary tract infection, kidney infection, kidney stones, endometriosis, a bladder cancer, a vaginal infection, or a chronic uh, prostatitis in men, a diagnosis leading to IC is simple by following a process of elimination. If a patient is test negative for everything I've just listed, then a procedure, um, procedure called cystoscopy will be performed by a urologist. A cystoscopy is, simple, is a simple procedure where a doctor looks into a patient's bladder using an instrument called a cystoscope. Here's an uh, image of a cystoscope, and here is where um, the flexible tube is entered through, um, is used to enter through the urethra, and that's the eyepiece where the doctor can see. And um, I have a next image to show you of what a cystoscopy procedure looks like. Um, during the procedure, the long flexible tube has a fiber optic camera at the end of it, and is inserted through the urethra, uh, through the urethra until the bladder is reached. Bladder is filled with sterile water uh, using the side channels on the cystoscope. Doing this will help the doctor get a clearer picture of the bladder wall. If the particular hemorrhages are visible, then the um, patient has IC. Quicker reviewing of what we have covered so far, we will have a better understanding of what IC is, who is at risk, what are the symptoms, the procedure that is used to diagnose the disease, and now we are left with one topic left to explore, treatments and remedies. Although IC is not curable, there are quite a few treatments and remedies a patient may consider to help relieve symptoms. The, oral, uh, the only oral drug that has been proven to coat and replenish the lining of the bladder 
has been approved by the FDA, known as Elmron. What a patient should be aware of is that it may take the six, up to six months to provide relief, and it has to be taken every day for a very long time in order for the symptoms to stop recurring. And um, the most common side effects is gastrointestinal uh, discomfort, hair loss, and nausea. The alternative treatment, the, uh, another alternative treatment is called um, a bladder installation. This is when a catheter or a, another long flexible tube is used to fill the bladder with a solution of a drug called denethyl uh, suboxide, or DMSO. The solution is held in the bladder for an average of uh, 10 to 15 minutes before the bladder is empty. Treatment is given either every week or every other week for a period of six to eight weeks and then repeated as needed. Improvement is usually seen uh, three to four weeks after the first to six to eight week cycle. And a patient has to consider that um, this drug is, um, will damage the liver, uh, liver over time, so regulation of blood pressure has to be taken. Uh, besides these two medical treatments, it is also recommended by the ICA that patients should alternate his or her diet, avoiding foods that are high in acid, caffeine, um, anything that's alcohol based, um, and that's it. Um, and another uh, remedy that uh, he or she can take action is to start exercising. Uh, Gentle exercises like yoga or tai chi. And in closing, uh, interstitial cystitis or C is a painful and terrible disease that can change a person's life completely. Remember that this, this disease can affect anyone at any age. So I hope I have raised everyone's awareness to it. Also, I hope that you have a better understanding of what IC is by its definition, symptoms, and treatments. Thank you. Okay, Joe, what did you think? I thought it was good, uh, clear, like, definitely like a clear thesis, like you knew what the presentation was about the whole time, good visuals, explicitly accurate. Uh, th definitely like an interesting topic that I don't know like I hadn't heard of so I think it was a good topic choice too and uh, the uh, I don't know an overall very good speech okay yeah I thought uh, the topic's nicely identified uh, you've got a pretty clear thesis and preview of what the contents are going to be there's a lot of good supporting material throughout the presentation but especially in the first couple of points your explanations uh, you keep it pretty basic and clear uh, what you're going to be talking about I think you could develop a little bit more audience interest since you're using some personal experience here uh, some narratives or stories to go along with it they don't necessarily have to be your own stories but uh, some other illustrations would be helpful um, because it does sound a little clinical at times and you want us to be able to relate to people who are suffering from uh, this problem uh, I thought the visual materials were fine they were integrated into speech pretty effectively they're large enough to see uh, they uh, occur at appropriate times maybe a little more reading during the presentation that we'd like but uh, that's not a heavy emphasis right now I thought you had good summary uh, it, both before your last point and after the last point uh, you did a nice job reminding us what the content of the speeches was uh, of the speech was <coughs> excuse me uh, I did think that some of the signposts were a little mechanical but that was mostly in the first half of the speech when you got to the later parts of the speech it sounded a lot more natural all right thank you